great talking to you, but more importantly, it's great to see you because the last time you and I spoke was around in November when you were releasing an album, had a great conversation yeah. over the phone, but it's good to see you, my friend. And, you know, one of the things that we did talk about was dealing with the pandemic. The pandemic's still going, man. And as we speak, we are, <laughs> we are locked down here in Toronto. I know. How are you holding up with all this, man? Um, It's... I feel like it's um, it's been better than I thought, to be honest. I think like I kind of found like a steady pace and adjusted to the whole situation. And I feel like things are really um, moving along. I kind of have this me- momentum of creativity happening. So I think um, it's turned out for the better, if anything. Are you writing more music? And also, are you getting your workouts in? Because I know you're a martial artist, too. Yeah. Have you been getting the both of those in? For sure, for sure. I do. I always do my workouts in the morning. I go biking now that the weather's a bit nicer, right? So I try and get out and do that. Um, but if anything, it's like, yeah, keeping that up is, it's a little bit trickier, right? It's harder to stay motivated, but it happens. So I'm trying to keep it balanced, do both at the same time. And in terms of new music, it's coming. It's like, I've been working on another project, another EP that I'm um, trying to get out soon once it's all wrapped up and finished so excited for that as well well i'm excited for you too the judo master class for 2021 you're on the short list congratulations on this thank you thank um you. when did you hear about this man that you can be part of this and for folks who don't know what the master class is the judo master class what is it exactly essentially it's like a mentorship workshop right so it's a master class where they'll bring in um, basically professionals from different sectors of the industry. You can have like a vocalist, a vocal coach. You could have a performance coach, a, a lawyer, banking stuff, like all different levels and dynamics of the industry. And they essentially um, bring in those people to help you and just guide you personally with your own journey and kind of tailor their knowledge to what works with you. So it's essentially a learning program and a development. Well, like I said, man, congratulations on being part Thank of all you. this. You have had, I would say, an amazing year and a half. Um, and it's funny because that year and a half is something we've been dealing with COVID. So exactly. how is it that, you know, I mean, we're all having a tough time, but what is it about you that you still are able to shine light through this tough time? I think, like, for me, the biggest thing is obviously live music, right? So having that got taken away is a big deal but I think what comes from it is just the idea that it's like okay to make music it's like I can still I almost feel like I have a bigger focus now and it kind of drives me to even I guess prepare for when things open up so it kind of keeps me even more motivated to like okay I want to get this my new set list ready to go I want to get this new album ready to go and I think that drive just keeps things kind of moving and pushing forward for me. Let's talk about that drive because, you know, the thing I remember talking about before, your music represents life. It represents the city. It represents community. It represents so many things. It's almost like the way Stevie Wonder would paint a picture with his music. I feel like you do the same thing with yours. Talk a little bit about how that artistry started for you in the love of music. Yeah, I mean, I went to a, a sports school, like growing up in high school. Like I always loved music and in my high school is when I really started to dive into like music production. I'd always like be in the music room making beats and stuff on the keyboard on GarageBand and stuff. Um, I started taking guitar, picking that up and then kind of fell in love with that. And then naturally, as any musician would, I feel like you just start to write songs and then it kind of went with like the music production thing. So I started recording myself. And then that love for it just kept going. So I was like, you know, I like the feeling. It, it's a way for me to express myself. And at the time, it was just to get things out, right? Just to get my own thoughts, ideas out. And now it's like, okay, I want to actually make this into something that I can, like, I can use to reach more people, right? And kind of just scale that up in terms of getting out of that comfort zone and start, you know, different collaborators, start playing more shows and and really just expanding it. So it's been an ongoing journey that I'd say probably started 10 years ago. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, though, that music may not have happened. You could have gone the other way of sports. 
for sure yeah i honestly i got into music really because i broke my arm like i was a gymnast and i used to compete for gymnastics right and i would only go to school half the day because i my schedule was set up to train half like after 12 p.m right so i got injured but my schedule was the same so i had all this time off during school i ended up buying a guitar and I would still, I would like practice the guitar like in my cast, right? Because my my elbow snapped. So I literally practiced it. I was six months out and then six months in physio. So it gave me so much time to just like, I started learning chords and everything. And that's what really started it, right? I wish I could that, I never had an instrument. I never I, could play anything. I wish I could talk to other members of your family. You sound like when you were growing up as a kid, you couldn't stay in one place. You sound like you were always busy or yeah. ruffle it around or something no exactly exactly <laughs> i did a lot of things like sports was it was it was heavy for me i did i did wrestling i did rugby i did basketball and then gymnastics was like my competitive sport well thank goodness because if you didn't do gymnastics you wouldn't be doing what you're doing now exactly we that are time. very <laughs> thankful for that yeah. talk a little bit about the days going into the coffee houses up in scarborough and what that did for you sorry say that again the coffee houses, performing in coffee houses and other places that you performed in? Yeah, like it was, I did everything, like bars, coffee houses, um, little like menus and stuff in the city. And I think um, it just helps you build calluses. I find like musical or performance, that skin, right? Of just like new, fresh crowd. The, it's never the right setting. Um, nothing's ever perfect it doesn't sound right there's distractions different things happening and I think just the liveliness of it um, when you're just kind of starting to get your performance chops together it's really important just to kind of stimulate you and keep you sharp and just work that live musician muscle and crowd communication in that sense so I think the coffee shops and the the little venues it all played a role in just like my whole live performance thing my whole stage fright kind of getting rid of that right so yeah a lot came out of it you told me a great story because you got an internship at warner music canada yeah and you told me a great story and how you got signed and it's mm -hmm. one of those kind of um almost like a disney story in some ways yeah. too. <laughs> talk a little bit about that please yeah like uh is basically I was in the radio promo department I was in grade 11 of high school so it's saying it ties into the whole gymnastics thing because how it worked was like I had half the day off right so we, we would schedule our co-ops for that second half of the day before I would train or something right so basically I did the rate I was doing the radio promo stuff and one day I was like my supervisor she asked me if I wanted to play Cause she knows into music obviously hence why i was there and i would always like bring my guitar because i would bring it from school because i took guitar at school so she asked me if i wanted to play in front of the office for a christmas party i played like three songs that i was writing at the time and then they liked it and from there it was just like okay let's just keep the conversation going right and develop it further and further it, it was really just like a on the spot kind of like she asked me a week ago and then this week I'm playing. It was just like that. And I was like, it worked out. Definitely did because uh, October of last year, you released some music, man. What was it? Excess. Yeah. My EP Excess, first one I've ever done. Um, essentially that whole concept was just about like over stimulated, too much pressure, oversaturated. I just felt like it was that time where it was like, there's so many opinions and it was just a personal thing for me, like through social media, through, you know, working relationships. It's just like, I kind of needed to just relax for a second and take a break from it. So the whole idea of excess was just like that overwhelming sensation, right? So I wanted to make music that really expressed that and catered to that feeling that I was going through. Now I'm curious, were most of those songs written before the pandemic or during the pandemic. And the reason why I asked that is because when you talk about the theme of it, sounds yeah. like during the pandemic, because in reminding folks, like I need to remind them, Black Lives Matter, what was going on in the US with the elections, um, Karen's and Kevin's, the, you know, are we gonna get uh, a vaccine? We've got a vaccine. Are yeah. we gonna take a vaccine? I'm not gonna wear a mask. You need to wear a mask. All these things were going on. It sounds like, in a lot of ways, the theme that you had there is what we've been dealing with. 
yeah, I think like in terms of the topics of the songs were more access in another sense, but it was definitely like that whole pandemic thing was a huge part of it. Cause it's like, it was so new. Everyone was freaking out. Like what information do I listen to? Who's right? Who's wrong? Where do I, that was just like an add on to what I was already writing about. Do you know what I mean? So it didn't really come through by the time that project was wrapped up. Cause we were only into like the first, it was almost still unsure at the time. I feel like there was still like this uncertainty. How long are we going to be in quarantine? How long is this going to last? Whatever, the whole on and off. So that feeling didn't really make it onto that project, right? But I feel like if anything, it it enhanced the whole feeling that I had before, just because it there was just more happening, right? So. So here you are. You've got an EP. You're releasing it during one of the heights of the pandemic. What did that time period do to your career? As you're trying to release new music, you can't mm -hmm. go out there and do what you love, which is performing live. How did yeah. you get around all this? Yeah, I think like at the time I was doing a, a live virtual tour, right? So I set up like venues. I would kind of take over their, the venues Instagram and just basically play live through their stories and stuff, right? But honestly, it was like, it was weird because like you're kind of working towards this thing you're expecting to go play the show through the summer you're expecting to go tour it promote it and then it's like sorry you can't even go outside right so to be honest it was like it felt like at the beginning of it it felt like a halt and then as i kind of just got settled in it felt like a like i was saying earlier like a bigger creative outlet and more reason to like push through it so that way coming out the other side it's like there's a new standard there's a new um just a so everything's refreshed right i just want it to feel like okay there was a year with no music or there was a year with no live music i want that to be the the feeling coming back for me and here we are uh as we speak the juno awards of course 50th anniversary in toronto you're part of the juno Masterclass for 2021 what is this doing for your career? How is it moving it forward? Yeah, the Juno Masterclass is definitely just helping me, one, make connections with the other artists that are in the group, the other band members, and then also mentors, right? Just having new mentors and new people who can reshape what I'm already doing and make it better and put their own flavor to it. I think in terms of, from a networking standpoint, it's amazing. And then just from a, development in terms of artistry and just knowledge of the overall industry it's all it's all a plus for me so it's definitely going to help develop and move things forward do we know if you have are there any plans uh for you or any of the other folks in the short list of the uh juno master class being part of the junos even though we know it's going to be virtual is there anything that we've have you heard yet if you're going to be part of anything not yet but there is a it is a maybe Okay, not so, yet. Nothing uh, for sure, but we'll see. As the warm weather is rolling around, though, are we going to see any virtual or drive-in performances or anything like that from you? For sure. I think, like, especially once I get all my um, this project wrapped up, this new music, and really have it ready to go, there's definitely going to be some performances, some videos, some a lot of content just surrounding it in general. So I'm excited to share that as well. So wait a minute, you just got made. So new music, are we looking at new music here? Oh yeah, we're looking at new music for sure. When do you think we're gonna be seeing that? And again, what's the feel on this? The feel, okay. I'm gonna, I don't wanna give away too much. Give but... away as much as you want. Just just give it to us, <laughs> give it to us. In terms of timeline, it's gonna be around the summertime. Okay. So I'm gonna have mu new music to play through the fall. Let's just say that, and it's going to be another EP. So that's really what's happening right now. All right. And I guess to get that information, we got to go to social media. Where do we go to follow you? Miles Costello on Instagram, uh, Miles Costello on Twitter, YouTube as well, and Facebook page, Miles Costello Music. You guys can follow me there. Fantastic. Miles, thank you so much for this interview, man. Thank you for the interview for we the did talk. five months ago. Thank you for the great music. Thank you for the inspiration and in how Me you're too. handling things. And it really shows that if you can put your mind to it, even the pandemic cannot hold you down, man. You can still move forward and still be, exactly. still be successful. Thank you again for the interview, my friend. For sure. Thank you. Good talk.